Welcome to Bendis Keep Actual Play. I'm Daniel. This is session two of my solo campaign. We're sending the mapper back out in the field. They recovered a map the first time. Let's see what they can get this second time. Going to run through the same process. They're going to go out. They're going to locate adventure sites that I can send a party to in the future for this campaign. Okay, welcome back to the mapper portion of my campaign. The mapper actually did pretty well. I did all the math and everything, and they basically got 1,250 experience points from the last session. I'm basically treating them like fighters, so they're about halfway to second level, so uh, they got lucky with a really good map. Now, I showed last video how I set this up, so I didn't bother to <laughs> record all that again, and here we are. We're all set up. Each one of these white tabs, if you haven't watched, is basically an exploration site that they want to get to. My mapper is down here. I usually don't name the mappers or do anything else like that until they get to at least second level, so they're just the mapper for now. Uh, they're starting on a water hex, which doesn't really matter, and they got really lucky because there's literally a treasure right in front of them. So hopefully uh, we'll be able to be very lucky this time, possibly get more than one treasure, and I can show you how that works. So again, we're going to roll a d6 to see what they can do. A 1. Okay, that's bad luck to start with. But a 1 means, if we remember from last time, I'm going to try to do this so the focus is better. Uh, basically, if they roll a 1 or a 2, they must move in a straight line with no turns, and they must move their full movement allowance. The full movement allowance of this particular character right now is six. So they want to get that treasure, obviously. So one, pick it up, two, three, and then four, five, six puts them in the mountain. That is less than ideal, of course, because <laughs> a mountain is going to have the worst chance to run into a bad guy. But, you know, it's what it is. So I didn't get any food, obviously. And I'm going to roll a d6 to see if we got water, because I didn't end on a water hex or go through one. I did not. All right, set traps down. Now we're going to... Oh, I did pick up this map, though. <laughs> Just a regular one. All right, now we're going to roll for an encounter. I'm in a mountain, so four, five, or six means an encounter. Five. Fantastic. Okay, so before I do the encounter, I'm going to switch this over to five. And now we're going to look for under our mountains, and we're going to see what our encounter could be. So we're in the mountains. I'm going to roll a d8. Two in the mountains is a flyer. Okay, so I'm going to roll on the flyer table, which is a d12 table. Yeah, another two. That is rocks. Oh, fantastic. Okay, so we've got rocks. Now what we want to do is look at, in Monsters and Treasure, and we're going to look up rocks. And rocks can be from 1 to 20 of them, and there's a 20% chance that they're in their lair. So let's roll to see if they're in their lair. They are not with a 45, and there's between 1 and 20 rocks. Now, believe it or not, we actually want a high number here, 10. And that's because the way the evasion rules work, the higher percentage of total number of monsters appearing, the better chance you have. So that's about 50% of the total number of monsters. So we, the rocks are there. We're going to go over to our evasion tables, and we're going to look here. There's only one of us. It's 20 to 60% of their total, which is 70%. And then we're going to subtract because they're faster than us. So they're going to subtract 25% from that. So basically, we've got a 45% chance of avoiding the rocks. And if we don't avoid one, then you're going to see how that works in a second. So let's take this. We're up here. Okay, 78. We did not avoid the rock. So the way this works is now using the the pursuit, if the monster, so no matter what happens now, as soon as that happens, no matter what the monster is, what we have to do is roll a d6. This will put the random direction that we're going to move. Three. Three is this way, which is into this water hex, which is nice. And what happens is normally <laughs> the water and food would go down, but since we actually went into water, we're good there. And we also have to turn this. And because they're twice as fast as us, there's a 50% chance that they are going to follow. 87. So they do follow. If they follow, we roll another d6 to see what we run. 3. Same direction. Okay. And again, we're just moving one hex at a time here, but every time we do this, this is why this might be the end for my mapper. <laughs> 3. Um, and now we have to see if they follow us again. Oh, this has to go down one. This goes down one, so actually our, our movement went down, but I'll deal with that in a second. 15. They did not follow. The pursuit is over. 
However, for each day of pursuit, so two pursuits, you lose, you have to rest for a half a day. So I lose one more day because that happened. So I actually moved to here and I have to roll twice for random monsters on that day. Luckily, I'm in the plains, so hopefully I won't encounter anything. One, remember we encountered on a six. Three, okay, no encounters and we are basically good to go. All right, unfortunately, I thought I was gonna be really lucky and be able to get more than one treasure, but it doesn't look that way because I basically have two more moves and I have to get off the board. So if I can't get to this house over here, to reset my time in two moves, which I cannot do, then it might be possible to get to that one. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Remember, my movement's only five now. And I would end on water, which would be good for me, so I'd have six the next movement. No, but the food would go down as well. One, two, yeah, it's not possible. I cannot get to a house, so if I'm playing smart, which of course I want to play smart, I'm going to try to leave the board. So all I need is to not roll a one or a two here. Four, okay. One, two, three, and I'm off the board. Again, short session, but that's the way it is. And I haven't, again, I haven't worked out all the economy for this, but I did get one map. So let's see what kind of map it is. We're going to roll percentile. And 11 tells me that it is a treasure map. I'm going to roll a D8 to see what kind. Six. Six is three above, so three is one and two. Okay, good. And one to 100 gems. Holy guacamole. That's a really good treasure map. Okay, so I'm going to roll and calculate out what all this is, and I'll have it for the next session. Actually, let me just roll this real quick. I already rolled the silver. So I want to show you how you do this. So it's 10 to 40,000 silver, so that's a D4 times 10,000. And then here, uh, five to 30,000 gold is a D6 times 5,000. So five, five times five is 25, so 25,000 gold pieces. And remember, these maps are, are not just leading to a hole that has this in there. Obviously, there's, this is a layer of a monster. And then 100 gems. I'm not going to roll all the gems, but I want to see how many gems there are. Ooh, is that a six? Nope, 56 gems. So the way that we do gems is we have this table here, and I do them in groups of 10 in this case. So I'll do, I'll roll six times for the first 10, second 10, third 10, whatever, and then the last six. And then that'll give our value. And I'll have this all set for the next time. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please hit like. Also, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Ring the bell so you get notifications and check out the description. I've got links to all the various things I'm using for this campaign down there, as well as a link to my Discord server if you want to join up over there and my Patreon if you'd like to support the channel. In any case, I'll talk to you soon.